Assalamu alaikum. So you still like I'm the final speaker here. Uh, may I ask everyone to write, inshallah, just uh, inshallah, stretch a little bit? Yes, inshallah. You guys been here probably since the morning. So many talks, mashallah. We love that, you know, banana me. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. How are you feeling now? Better? Okay, alhamdulillah. We might have a seat, inshallah. Bismillah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa minwala. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اما بعد. So uh, the topic as the brother mentioned uh, the topic assigned to me is very broad you know navigating the challenges that faced young Muslims or Muslims in general when they try to build a legacy in the West and the United States, right? So this topic, subhanAllah, requires a lot of time to, you know, just to, subhanAllah, to discuss it. But before I start, inshallah, that for the next few minutes, we'll try to talk about this, inshallah, I mean, before I start, I would like to ask myself and everyone sitting here a simple question. The question is, when we depart this world, when you leave this world, what do you want people to see about you? Guys, I want you to think about this question. You know, when someone passed away, what I personally do, especially if someone that I want to know, you know, more about them, subhanAllah, of course, to make more dua for them, I go check their, their social media profile, all right? check their social media profiles. So the question is, when someone checks your social media profiles, what do you want them to say or to see? SubhanAllah. And this is an extremely important question. What legacy are you leaving behind? And your social media is just one aspect of it. Your social media is just one aspect of it. So, number one, what do you want people to say about you after you pass away from, the, from this venue? Okay? Second question. Why do you want to build a legacy? What is the reason behind them? That's also an important question. Do you want people to talk about you and mention your name because you want to make sure that you remain famous until you are Qiyamah? Well, guess what? You will not be more famous than Abu Lahab. Do you know Abu Lahab? The uncle of the Prophet ﷺ and one of the strongest enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the worst enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, his name is mentioned in the Quran and that we will sign his name until the day of judgment. So his name is still there and he will continue to be there. But subhanAllah, it's a legacy. But what kind of legacy is that? It's a terrible legacy. That's not the type of legacy that you and I want to live in this world. The people when they remember our name, they say, Alhamdulillah, Mustarahum min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him, and the world is a better place right now. SubhanAllah. Think about it. So why do you want to build a legacy? Why do you want to establish a, build, a, a legacy after you die? So we have the example of Wulah. Do we have other examples for people in Quran that we do not even know their names, yet their legacy is still amongst us? Yes. How many of you know the story of the man Sarawun? He was the one who stood in the face of the tyranny, of the oppression, of oppression of Fir'aun. Yeah? So Fir'aun is talking to his people about Musa. He's telling people that Musa is the magician and Musa is trying to cause a lot of corruption. What did Muhammad al Fir'aun do? What did he say? He stood in the face of Pharaoh, he stood up in the face of Pharaoh, and he said, Do you want to harm Musa because he says, Rabbi Allah, because Allah is my Lord? Yeah? Allah mentioned his story in two pages. Two pages in Surah Rafa, and one page in Surah, according to the Mufassirin, and one page in Surah, actually that's another person, in Surah Rafa, Allah mentioned, his story, but do we know his name? Have you ever read his name anywhere? The answer is no. 
Did he leave a legacy? The answer is yes. So your name has not, you know, it's not supposed to be mentioned just in order for you to leave a legacy. It's not just about your name, but what kind of legacy are you leaving in this dunya? That's the most important question. Without talking about the challenges, I will give you some advice, inshallah, I'm going to the brothers and sisters, our younger sisters, and everyone here, myself, that if you apply and implement in your life, you will leave a legacy, and none of the challenges will matter to you. Are we ready for this? I want you to take notes, inshallah. There are three things that, and three qualities, that if you have, you will leave a legacy without even you realizing. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something. Number one, al ikhlas Sincerity. Sincerity, guys. I just mentioned the story of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his story in Quran. It would be mentioned and remembered and recited until the day of judgment. Yet we do not even know his name. Why do you think he accomplished this, this you know, position? Because of the digital loss, because of his heart. That's the most important thing. If you want to become famous, you want to become celebrity, if you want to become like a leader, if you want to become, you know, whatever, if you want to become the, the best in the MSA, the one who can do all great things, but you don't have a loss, none of them will be accepted. And guess what? Nobody will remember you after you're done. So you need sincerity, ikhlas, in everything that you do, in every action that you do. What is your, what is your name when you, by coming here today? What is the, in the name of everyone from YM by establishing and organizing this program, right? What is your name? And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge you based on. Huh? Your name. So when you have ikhlas, then automatically you will build and leave a legacy behind you. There is no doubt about it. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about Yusuf alayhi salam, he mentioned multiple places, he says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ Yusuf alayhi salam, you know, all the way from, from the well to jail, to becoming the, the minister of Egypt, you know, one of the top officials in Egypt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ He accomplished what he accomplished because not because he was smart, not because he was the best speaker, not because he was the most knowledgeable person, but it was because of his name. إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ In one, one qira'ah. Al-Mukhlasin, the sincere and the pure ones. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that position. If you want to build a legacy, without even worrying about the challenge that will face you. The khlas. But Sheikh, you know, the society is going to be against me. People are judgmental. You know, my, the peer pressure and all of these things in college, in school, in my work, all of this thing. None of that matters to you. You know why? Because it is all about your connection and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are not going to accept you. You know, possibly. But who cares? As long as you want to help people out, as long as you do your part, and as long as on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you what you left behind, you're telling me, Allah, I talked to people and I was sincere and I tried my best, I conveyed the message. So ikhlas is the most important factor if you want to leave a legacy in this dunya. Wallahi, how many people that it, perhaps in their lives we did not hear anything about them? Wallahi, we did not hear any, much about them. But after they died, what happened? SubhanAllah, all of a sudden, the greatest scholar of Medina, the greatest scholar of Syria, the greatest scholar of maybe like, you know, abandoned village in Africa or in the Middle East or here and there, he passed away and everyone started posting about it. Why do you think this kind of things happen? That person was unknown in the beginning, was unknown on earth, but he was very famous in heaven, SubhanAllah. The angels knew his name. If you're not famous and known amongst people and you're doing something good, you need to be certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you. He knows your, huh, your name. Okay? So when you do something, when you volunteer for YM, when you do something for your community, for your MSA, I want you to put this in your mind. Yes, we all like to be acknowledged. We love to be acknowledged. You know, the sheikh, the scholar, the leader, the most successful, the top, the richest. Yeah? We love to be acknowledged. 
But if you did not get the acknowledgement that you're seeking or you're hoping, you're wishing for, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acknowledging you. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are, are mentioning your name and that should be sufficient. And that's enough motive and inspiration to keep you going, even in the face of all the challenge that you will face in your school and in the society as well. Yes, let's face it. The society is not just going to, you know, to, to let you change them like that. People, they do not like change. People that are the enemy of the change of uncertainty. Why do you think Abu and all these people did not accept the Prophet Sallallahu in the beginning? Why do you think you were? One of the reasons because they did not want to change. It's not easy for you to change. We love to be in our comfort zone. We don't like to change at all, right? So it's not easy to change people. It's not easy to change your friends. It's not easy to change your parents. It's not even easy to change yourself, correct? So you have to understand that you will try your best and you try to your best to be the most successful. You know, the most successful Muslim and everything, the most successful Muslim. And the most important thing is the ikhlas. You do not have to see the product and the outcome of your work in this dunya. But in the hereafter, you will see everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let anything that you do in this dunya go to waste. 100%. Did we hear about the woman who cleaned the message of the Prophet Sallallahu The story is famous, right? The woman who used to clean the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Do you guys know that we don't even know her name? There is no single mention of that, the name of the woman anywhere in the books of Sirah. We only know her as the woman who used to clean the, the, the bathroom or the masjid of the, of the Prophet Do you know that the only time, hear me out, that's the only time in Sirah that we learned that the Prophet visited the Baqiyah, the cemetery. The only time mentioned in Sirah that the Prophet ﷺ went to to visit the cemetery was to visit that woman. When he saw the masjid, it was a, you know, it was a mess. And then he asked Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where is the lady who used to clean the masjid? They said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away. And the Prophet ﷺ said, why did you tell me? I wanted to perform a janaz on her. Right? And then the Prophet Wasallam said, take me to her grave. And he went to the cemetery. And he made dua for her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive her because of that. Do we know her, know her name? No. Did she have sincerity and ikhlas? Absolutely. She didn't care about people saying, you know, she's just cleaning the masjid, she cleans the bathrooms. None of that matter. Whatever you do, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your legacy will be built. And whatever people say about you will not matter. Because it's all about you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen guys, people are always going to talk about you, whether you do good or do bad. Okay? And the love comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that, right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, he announced to the angels that I love my servants who do love them. If you think that you're, you're, you're just uh, trying to fit in the society and you're doing what your, your friends or classmates or your co-workers or your family members do, because you want to please people, guess what? People are still not going to be happy with you. They're not going to be happy with you. They always find something to talk about you. All right? So focus on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the khlas. You want to live a legacy? Sincerely. Ask yourself before doing any action, anything that they do, why I am doing this action. Am I waiting for people's recognition? They might recognize you once. But it might not happen again. Are you ready to continue? Are you ready to move on with your life? So that's the first one. The second one, and before that, I just want to mention one story since we talk about the Hijrah of the Prophet and the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why you will Suhaib bin Rumi. Suhaib bin Rumi, one of the greatest companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he first came to Mecca, um, you know, he was extremely poor. They call him the Suhlu. Was an extremely poor person, yeah. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, Suhaib bin Rumi, uh, he wanted to go with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah. So they stopped him. The people of Quraysh stopped him. They said, Yeah, Suhaib, where are you going? Where are you going? He said, I want to go with Muhammad and his companions. I just want to leave. And they said, 
at a internet at a internet solution for our energy so like you came to us and you you had absolutely nothing and we took care of you look how rich you are right now because of us you're just gonna leave us like that and subhanallah he said okay what do you guys want for me right now he said leave everything we made you leave everything and go he said if i leave everything will they allow me to go with the prophet he said absolutely go he left everything the wealth property everything behind and guess what happened he was unknown on earth but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew his name do you know there is one ayah one verse of the quran that we recite about suhaib and rumi we will be reciting this verse until the day of judgment Amongst people, or there are some people who are ready to sacrifice themselves, sell themselves for the sake of Allah. A verse was mentioned and revealed in the Quran because of one person. Why? Because of his ikhlas and sincerity. If you want to build it, brother, you're going to let me know because brothers, law, somebody, your team, admins, you don't want to stop. Where is it? MashaAllah, look at that. Okay, just 13 minutes left. 13 minutes left. Okay. So, what's the first practical step again if you want to, uh, you know, leave the legacy behind you, inshallah? What's the first one? Floss, floss, sincerity. The most important thing. All right. The second one is humility and humbleness. Humility and humbleness. SubhanAllah. What a word. To be humble. Do you want to be around someone who always brag about their whatever they have and about their families, about their accomplishments? Do you like to be around, you know, arrogant people? Do you really want to be around them? The minute you start talking about yourself and bragging about yourself, people will understand that you are that time. That I can tell you. The minute you start saying, I, 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 people realize that. They will know that this guy is just full of himself. She's full of herself. She thinks she's something. He thinks he's something. And I'm telling you, people would not want to hang out with you. That's, that's the reality. But subhanAllah, how many times, how many times you will see some people, they're very humble, alhamdulillah, and when you talk about them, the only quality that perhaps you mention about them is, Wallahi, well, they're very humble people. You want to build a legacy in this dunya? Be humble. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man tawadha, he did this by the way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a very visual person. He said, ayyuhan nas, man tawadha, and he did this, man tawadha, lillahi rafa'a. The one, the one, who humbled himself for Allah, Allah will elevate his status. Does anyone know why we're the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we mix the Jews? When we mix the Jews, the Prophet says, Aqrabu ma yakunu abdu rabbihi wa huwa sajid. When you mix the Jews, you're the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know why? Do you know why? You can talk, it's okay, come on, what's going on? Did you guys eat? Huh? Exactly. Look, when you mix a shoot, I want you to think about this for a second. When you mix a shoot, what do we say when you mix a shoot? In Frisco Masjid, we say, Subhana Rabbi Allah. What do you guys see here? Subhana Rabbi Allah. Subhana Rabbi Allah. Subhana Rabbi Allah. Same thing. Guru be to Allah, the Most High. Correct? You're putting your head down on the ground and while you're putting your head down on the ground you say glory be to allah the most high put your head down and glorify allah then ask for whatever you want you want to leave a legacy be humble your teacher in school when they're humble when they're simple people you always remember them 
We, we always remember the teacher who was always kind to us, humble to us. He never made us feel that he is, you know, a teacher. He's a big child. He's knowledgeable. He's this. When Musa alayhi salam, and we know the story of Al-Khidr alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, when he was asked the question, is there anyone on the face of earth who is more knowledgeable than you? Musa alayhi salam said, yes. I mean, no. He said, no. He was not arrogant. He was not. He was not arrogant. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach him a lesson. He wanted to teach him a lesson. He said, oh, uh -uh. you're not the most knowledgeable person. There is somebody out there that perhaps nobody ever heard of him. You will go, you will follow him, and you will learn it from him. Humble yourself. You know those people, subhanAllah, if you want to build a legacy again, and it doesn't matter what kind of struggle you're facing, it doesn't matter, you will build the legacy. I'm giving you the practical advice. You know these people who walk like, subhanAllah, is like big shah. And when someone talks to them, Ta'ai from me, you know, like, like in Egypt, they were listening. This guy was a police officer. He used to work for the traffic, you know, traffic police. Every time he asked someone for the driver license, he would say, I'm sorry for me, don't you know who I am? They do my family. Okay? Every time. And he let them go. All right? And of course, they're faking it. Their families, they don't have anything, but they fake it something to get the license, right? But one time, that person who was actually a big shot, who said the same thing, oh, don't you know me? Then that's the traffic police said, you know, uh, the officer, he said, oh, every time I ask somebody for the license, say, oh, do you know my family? You know, I? And he was actually the big shot, right? So it was very dangerous for the police. However, the point of evidence here is that there are some people like this, they think like, I am better than anybody else. But that's, that's not true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us equally. There was a story where this big shot actually walking and someone went to him and he says, why are you walking like this? I want you to hear this story, please. Why are you walking like that? He said, don't you know me? He said, I know you very well. Okay. Tell me about me then. He said, I want you to hear this, guys. What is your beginning? It's just a drop of spirit. And Allah honor you. That's our beginning. And eventually your end is going to be a dead body. So that's your beginning, just a, just a job of spirit. That is your beginning. And your end, Jutta, a dead body. That wallahi, it doesn't matter how wealthy you were. People will not be able to take your smell few hours after you pass away. They will not, the most closest people to you, they will not be able to stay with you for one second. That's your end. And he said, and between this and that, you have dirt in your stomach. May Allah honor you. So that is you. Why do we have to be arrogant? If that's our beginning, and that's our end, and that's basically what we have. SubhanAllah. You want to leave a legacy? Humble yourself. Humble yourself. And people will always, always remember you. They will remember you. Whenever your name is mentioned, alayhi rahmatullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him maqfirah, and they will make dua for you. You want to be with that kind of And you will change the world through your akhlaq. That's reality. Don't tell me about Islam. We talk too much about Islam. We want to show Islam in our akhlaq. Don't tell me about Islam. Show me Islam and Islam in your manner, in your Islam. Show your classmates, your MSA friends, your family members, your co-workers. Show them Islam in your manners. Don't talk too much about Islam. You don't have to talk even too much about the deen. People will understand, like, what makes you behave like that? 
then you can say it's my deen. It's my religion. So the first lesson and the advice I want to share with you, if you want to leave a legacy in this dunya, is well, again, well, I'm, an, I'm a teacher, so that's, that's what I do every day. The first one is, okay, fine. Ikhlas, sincerity. The second one is, second one is, tawadu, tawadu, humility. And finally, and finally, consistency and sabr. Consistency and sabr. You will not leave a legacy if you're someone who does not have sabr. Why do you think the Prophet Sallallahu left a legacy? Why do you think Abu Bakr Siddiq left a legacy? Why do you think Nelson Mandela left a legacy? You know how many years he spent in jail? How many years? I love this corner. I love all the corners. And this one is very nice. Did you eat your yadi, brother? Huh? Huh? You have what? No, no, I'm, say I'm saying that you eat biryani today, that's why we're focusing, mashallah. Pizza. Mashallah, mashallah. The Korean, alhamdulillah. Nelson Mandela, he's, he stayed in jail. He spent about 27, 28 years in jail. 28 years in jail. And still, he never gave up on his mission. And he left jail and he changed the world. Huh? Do you think he could have accomplished that without something? Absolutely not. No way. People are always going to give you an in the beginning. You're going to give a hard time. It's not going to be easy all the time. The path is not going to be easy. To change yourself and change others and to leave a legacy in this dunya, you will not, you will not do this without sabr. Let me ask you if I can back home over there. LeBron James or Michael Jordan? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Sisters are allowed to answer, inshallah. Who is the GOAT? LeBron. LeBron. Yeah. Huh? Oh, my, MK? Uh, MJ, sorry. What did I say MK? MJ? MJ, the greatest, right? It's my guy right there. I'm the Okay. I mean, I can be a little. I stopped, I stopped watching basketball when, when, when MJ retired. A lot of That's true. I used to watch in 1990 something. I don't think any, any other person can come. So how do I accomplish what that? But anyways, LeBron James, read his story and read the story of Michael Jordan. Read his story. This guy was kicked out of the, you know, the league many times. This guy was. Read, the, read their stories. And again, we, it's okay. We're allowed to give stories of the Muslims as well, who are accomplished. Had LeBron James or Michael Jordan given up from the very beginning, hadn't they had the consistency and stuff, they would have been, we don't even remember their names right now. If you want to leave a legacy in this, dun a legacy in this dunya, have supper and be consistent. And you know, there will be a lot of hurdles, a lot of obstacles, but we need to keep going. That's the most important thing. I want you guys today, and that's inshallah that the lesson that I want you to walk away with inshallah, I mean, doesn't matter what happens, you need to make sure that after you leave this dunya, you leave something that which will benefit humanity, which will benefit people, even one person, that should be enough for you, subhanAllah. Okay? Do not give up. You will face all kinds of obstacles and challenges and problems in your school and in work. It is okay, keep going. Don't give up. You will be fine. And you will know Inshallah, in dunya and the hereafter, the amazing work that you've been doing, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue showering you with His mercy and with His knowledge, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma Ameen. Wa'am, Jazakumullah Khairan, you're doing great. Keep the hard work, Alhamdulillah. Our masjid, Islamic Center, first of all, is open for you anytime, as long as you don't give us trouble. I'm just kidding. And INT and all Masajid are welcoming you, inshallah, because we do believe in your mission and the amazing work that you do. Thank you. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.